Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 5, lesson 5, nonlinear functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine if a function represented in different forms is linear or nonlinear by using the rate of change, shape of the graph, or structure of the equation. Let's learn. Identify linear and nonlinear functions from graphs. So, so far, we've only seen linear functions. Linear functions have graphs that are straight lines. So one way you can help remember, linear has the word line in it. They are straight lines. This is because the rates of change between any two points on a line is constant. And we showed this using our slope triangles back in module four. Now this one doesn't perfectly go through the cross there of the grid, but we could show that this is about one and two, even if we went up two, Again, it wasn't perfect, but it's about two and four. So using slope triangles, we can show that it's constant slope no matter where we are on the line. A non-linear function, they are graphs whose rates of change are not constant. What this means is the graphs are not straight lines. So if we had a point, let's say here to here, I went up maybe one half over three. So one half divided by three, this has a rate of change about one sixth. But if I look, say, from here to here, it went up one over two. That's a slope of one half. It's not the same. It is non-linear. And we can see just by the pictures, linear makes a straight line. Not linear is not a straight line. Example one, identify linear and non-linear functions from graphs. Determine whether the graph represents a linear or non-linear function. Explain. So here we're given a graph. Our first question we should be asking ourselves if we're given a graph is, is this graph a completely straight line? Because then it has a constant rate of change. So is this graph a completely straight line? It is not a completely straight line. It's made up of two parts that are straight lines, but altogether, this is not one completely straight line. Here we have a rate of change that's negative two over two, so negative one. Here, our rate of change is two over two, or positive one. They are not the same. One is going down, one is going up, not a constant rate of change. So we would say this is nonlinear because the overall graph is not a one completely straight line. Check your understanding. Determine whether the graph represents a linear or nonlinear function. Explain. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. This is non-linear because it's not a straight line. It does not have a constant rate of change throughout. Down here in this area, the rate of change is negative. Here, the rate of change is positive. Here, the rate of change is slower than it is up here. Not a straight line, non-linear. Example two. Identify linear and nonlinear functions from graphs. A square has side length of s inches. The area of the square is a function of the side length. Graph the function to determine if it's linear or nonlinear, then explain. So first, if we are doing this, we want to make a table of values so we can plot those points and graph them. So let's find the area of a square with the side lengths for 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then let's remember area of a square is just area is equal to the side squared. So if the side is one, the area is one. If the side is two, two times two is four. Side three, three times three is nine. Four times four would be 16. Five times five, 25. Using these, let's graph it. So we're gonna make a coordinate of one, one. So one, one, two would be at four. Three would be at nine. 4 is at 16, and 5 at 25. So 5, 25. If I were to connect this with a line as best as possible, a zero-sided square would have an area of zero. So it would go like this. I'll do my best to draw it here. Are these points on a straight line? No. So this would be a nonlinear function. 
if you're not sure if this is a straight line, maybe you thinking you just drew it slightly off, check your rates of change. Here, one space over, so one for your run, it went from four to nine. So it went up five. The slope there was five. But here, one space over, it went from 16 to 25. It went up nine. So the slope there would be nine. Are they the same rate of change? They are not. This is non-linear. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and determine if this is a linear or non-linear function. Explain your reasoning. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said this is again a non-linear function. If we graph it, they do not make a straight line. Here it went up from one to eight, so it went up seven for one. Here it went from eight to 27, so it went up 19 for one. Definitely not the same rate of change. It is not a straight line. It is non-linear. Let's learn. Identify linear and non-linear functions from tables. You can determine whether a function represented in a table is linear or non-linear. We just saw that you could just take these points and turn them into coordinates and graph them. And if they make a straight line, then it would be linear. But we can also just tell from a table. And to do that, we only need to look at the rate of change. So if it has a constant rate of change, it is linear. If it's not a constant rate of change, then it is non-linear. So if we look at the first table here with our example of a linear function, my y value went down to, down to, down to for every five that x went up. No matter where I look, the rate of change was negative two over five, negative two over five, negative two over five. Throughout this table, the rate of change was constant. It's always negative two fifths. This is a linear function. If we look at our nonlinear function, we can see a difference here. Even though our x value was consistently going up by one, the y value was changing to a different amount each time. So this one first had a rate of change of three over one. Then it switched to five over one. Then it changed again to seven over one. It is not a consistent or constant rate of change. This would be nonlinear. One thing to be cautious of, sometimes they might try to fool you in a linear table by giving you a random other value. So like, let's say they had 30, which means it went up 10, but this would now be at negative two. So even though this and this are different than what they were before, if we figure out the rate of change, negative four over 10, that would reduce to negative two over five, which then makes it the same as throughout. So be careful that you're checking it consistently and be sure to check every row. Example three, identify linear and nonlinear functions from tables. The table shows the minimum number of daily calories a tiger cub should eat based on its age and weeks. Determine whether the function is linear or nonlinear, explain. So let's just check the rate of change. For it to be linear, it has to be constant throughout, so we'll have to check all the rows. But as soon as we find one that is not the same, if that ever happens, then we can say it's not linear. So let's look at our rates of change. From the first week, the minimum calorie intake went up by 175. The second week, so from two to three, still went up one more week. This time it went up 100 and 85. Right away, I can see these are not the same. I don't even need to bother going through the rest. I found one place where they're not the same. This is a non-linear function. The rates of change changed. It was non-linear. Check your understanding. Determine whether the table represents a linear or non-linear function. Explain how you can tell. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. This is non-linear because the rate of change is not constant. Here, it went up from nine to 16, that's seven. Over here, I can see it's just going up by one each time. 
16 to 25 is now up 9, 25 to 36 is up 11. Not a constant rate of change, so this would be non-linear. Let's learn. Identify linear and non-linear functions from equations. Equations are the trickiest to tell because there's some rules that you have to follow. In order for an equation to represent a linear function, the equation must be able to be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope or the constant rate of change and b is the y-intercept or initial value. We've seen this in many lessons, that's our slope-intercept form. However, in order to get it into that format, sometimes it's a little tricky. You might need to distribute, you might need to combine like terms, you might need to multiply or divide using one of your properties of equality. Sometimes they don't give you the nicest looking equations, and it takes a lot more effort in order to get it into y equals mx plus b, so sometimes it's going to be easier just to look for the ones that are nonlinear. If an equation is nonlinear, it has at least one of the following characteristics. So first, if you see an exponent other than 1, which means 1s are not usually written, if you see an exponent other than 1, so maybe you see like x squared or you see y to the third power, some exponent other than 1 on one of the variables, this makes it nonlinear. So no exponents if we want it to be linear, no exponents. It cannot have any square root or cube roots. So if you see the square root of x or the cube root of x or y, that goes with no exponents, so no exponents, no roots. And finally, if it's nonlinear, there might be variables in the denominator. So the bottom of a fraction, you might see like one over x or two over y. If you see a variable in the denominator of a fraction, it's going to be nonlinear. So what I would say is you can't divide by x or y or whatever your variables are. And one other thing that's not listed here, it goes with this one with the division part. If you see anywhere in there x and y together, so x times y, there's a hidden multiplication in there, it's going to be nonlinear because if you try to get it into this y equals mx plus b format, you end up having to divide by x or y. So if you see an x times a y somewhere in there, odds are it is nonlinear. So overall, here's our few things we need to remember. In order for it to be linear, no exponents, no roots, can't divide by x or y, and then don't have x and y multiplied together. If we take what we learned in the previous part about graphs, we can see none of these have completely straight lines. None of them are linear functions. So let's compare that to our equations. Here we can see an exponent of 2. This is the graph of x squared plus 3. It is not a straight line. If we have 4x to the third power, again, not a power that's 1, we can see it makes this kind of curve. If we're given a square root, it makes a different version of a curve, still not a straight line. And if we were to divide by a variable, we end up with two curves. So we can see here all the rules that we were just looking at, exponents, roots, dividing by a variable, we get functions that are not straight lines. And if you have a graphing calculator available, such as Desmos or maybe a hand calculator, and you're allowed to use it, those types of programs can help you verify that the equations are linear or nonlinear. Example 4. Identify linear and nonlinear functions from equations. Determine whether the equation represents a linear or nonlinear function. Explain. y equals x divided by 3. Here we're given an equation. You might be tempted right away to see, oh, there's a fraction. This is nonlinear. But remember, that rule was the variable cannot be in the denominator. A number can. Our variables, this is not in the fraction, this is in the numerator, or top of the fraction, not the bottom. We can rewrite this as y equals one-third x, which is that in the form of y equals mx plus b? Well, we would just have plus zero at the end, so yes, it is. So y equals x over three would be a linear function, since it can be written in the form 
y equals mx plus b, m is one third, that's your constant rate of change, and b is zero. Check your understanding. Determine whether the equation represents a linear or non-linear function. Explain how you can tell. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said, yes, this is a linear function. It can be written as y equals mx plus b. I can slightly pull this x off to the side and put it with negative two fifths out front plus five. There's no exponents. X and Y are not in the bottom of the fraction. There's no roots and X and Y are not multiplied together. Those are the things that make nonlinear. This is a linear function. The slope would be negative two fifths and your Y intercept would be five. Example five, identify linear and nonlinear functions from equations. Determine whether the equation represents a linear or nonlinear function. Explain. We have y equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. So can we write this into y equals mx plus b? Right away, I'm going to say no, we cannot write it because it has one of those rules that make it into a nonlinear. I see an exponent that is not 1. Possibly it could cancel out with combining like terms, but that's not going to happen here. Since there's an exponent other than 1, automatically this is nonlinear. So this is nonlinear because it cannot be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. If we were to graph this just to show that it would be nonlinear, if here was your axis, you'd end up with an equation looking something like that. We would be able to see that it is nonlinear. Check your understanding. Determine whether this equation represents a linear or nonlinear function. Explain how you can tell. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This is nonlinear. We cannot write it as y equals mx plus b. In the equation, there's a square root. That was one of our rules for making it nonlinear. Because we see a square root, it's going to make it nonlinear. If I were to try to get rid of the square root by doing the inverse, making it to the second power, then all of a sudden I'd have y to the second power. Then I would have an exponent, which is also not okay. So no matter what, I can't get it into y equals mx plus b. This would be nonlinear.